Well, I have to say the views out here are beautiful. I, you know, if you go back two years of my life to all the way for my entire life, the first 45 years of my life, almost 50 years of my life, I was a beach bum. I liked the sand, I liked the coast, at the Gulf Coast, the lighter, the lighter waves. And, uh, palm trees that gave me serenity. And so I spent so much of my life devoted to employment in the southeast part of the country for the most part and living on the islands on the west coast of Florida. That was my peace. And then I went to Colorado for 10 years. And I was never really close to being fully happy. But I made the best of it, of course. And then I started traveling and I started headed east to get back to Florida, which is actually where I bought the van, just outside of St. Petersburg. And it started getting so humid and muggy when I was along the coast from Galveston to Houston. And I just couldn't take it, the humidity. Everything was wet. My clothes, the curtains, everything in here was wet, including myself. And I, the pain would get really bad. My pain issues with my back and my injuries. And so I'd go north about three hour drive and then wait two or three days and come back down to the coast and I'd come right back within a day and so I said what am I gonna do and I said well let's go to the southwest let's go to Arizona well I got as far as New Mexico and there was so much to see in New Mexico and I have enjoyed almost every day of it even through the winters just not a hundred percent through the winters but you know again I make the best of each situation but I love New Mexico, and some people just breeze through it and think it's a boring state, but there's so much history and so much to see in New Mexico. No, I'm not promoting it. I'm just telling you about my own situation, my own personal situation. And, you know, I don't know where I'm going to go for winter. I mean, I'm already paid up for New Mexico. I've already got reserved electrical sites through November, December, January that I might end up abandoning and not even using. I still miss Florida. I still miss the beaches, but not all the falseness of it. So I don't know where I'm gonna spend winter. And my plan really is to not have a plan, which I think is the best way of doing things. And we're headed to a national forest right now, today. Mika's on my lap, as she usually is when we're driving. She says, hi, can't you see? Can't you see? Oh, can't you see now what that kitty been doing to me? <laughs> yeah, I'm in a good mood. I always am, though. I try to be. So, we're uh, headed to a campground, I think. <laughs> the road just turned gravel, and we got 20 miles to go. I better check my GPS. Take care, everybody. Oh, uh, I couldn't handle 20 miles of this. Even with new shocks and new front end. Uh-oh. Well, I guess we're going from 20 miles an hour down to 10 miles an hour. And now I'm going to check my GPS and see if we're even going the right way. Because I don't know if we are or not. And it's a Friday. It's going to be a weekend. Take care, everybody. Love y'all so very much. Don't ever forget how special you are. Not only to yourself, but to everybody who communicates with you. You, each and every one of you, are special for so many individual reasons. Don't ever forget that. You guys are awesome, each and every one of you. Total strangers I meet at gas stations and, and restaurants. You're all awesome. Love everybody equally. Without judgment. I mean, here's something. I, I, I mentioned this to another YouTuber. And she was talking about unconditional love. And I left a comment on that video saying, you know, 
I didn't really. I thought I did, but not until you get there. I, I thought I understood unconditional love, but I didn't practice it fully. And then once I got this cat, my second cat of my life, cats for life people, they feel attachment and they will go through attachment disorder if you ever abandon them or give them away for some odd reason that you think you have to get rid of them to move or to get a different apartment. That's not the case, it's not true. And pets give you unconditional love. In fact, I know I've seen some cases where people actually abuse their dog or keep it tied up outside in the heat or beat on it physically. And that dog still loves them. That's unconditional love. And that's how us humans are supposed to treat other humans. Unconditional love. No judgments. And that's kind of the whole point of the comment that I left behind is that once I had a cat, this cat, Mika, and became single and fine-tuned my inner self, which I still do every day, and then I understood unconditional love. And once you understand it that way, it's easier to give it to everybody else. I guess it's probably easier if you get out of the city, too. Because the city is full of stress. Okay, I gotta check my GPS, because something just... <laughs> something isn't right. This isn't the forest. This is like BLM land, and I don't camp BLM. Take care, folks. Love ya. Blessings.